Ma'am, you are new. Yeah. Welcome back after the break. Okay. So, Sitikedu has a question. Like as we are, uh, ma'am, I had a question. Like as we are studying about the kingdom of God, and we have got a great commission from the Lord, and it is said that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But how this thing can be achieved when the situation is like the Western countries <coughs> are following Hinduism in a rapid pace. And before 2015, Christianity was the fastest growing religion, but now it is Islam. I wanted how can we build the kingdom of God in such a situation? Okay. When the situations and the atmosphere is not in our favor, is there something which we are lacking behind? Uh, thank you for the question, um, Sitikenu. Anyone would like to throw some light on his uh, uh, on his question? Some anyone would like to answer, share your perspective before I do. Anyone? <coughs> I don't understand why I am just back faster. If we can get the question back to us, maybe we can try where we can. I don't hear the question. You didn't hear the question? Okay, I'll just read it out. Uh, he's posted it on the chat. He says, Ma'am, I had a question like as we are studying about the kingdom of God and we have a great commission from the Lord and it is said that every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But how this thing can be achieved when the situation is like the Western countries are following Hinduism in a rapid pace. And before 2015, Christianity was the fastest growing religion. But now it is Islam. I wanted to know how we can build the kingdom of God in such a kind of situation. And he says, when the situations in the atmosphere is not in our favor, is there something which we are lacking behind? Can I say something about it, Pastor? Sure. There are. Uh, first of all, he quoted a line in the, in the Bible that every knee will bow before Christ. I, um, to me, according to my simple analysis, I, mean, I, I might think that uh, every knee would mean every knee that is going to be saved. Of course, there are some knees that are not good, that are not going to be saved. But every knee that is in that perspective of being saved must bow and kneel before Christ. Because, of course, we all know that there are some sheep and there are some folks, and there are some folks that dress like a sheep. So I mean, I think, I, I don't really think, because God is not taking us as, as puppets, God takes us as human beings who take decisions for themselves. So I don't think that everybody will be saved at the end. So I think every knee would mean. Uh, what is wrong might look like right or might be popular, but it doesn't mean that everything that's popular is the right thing. So Islam, Hinduism, and other things are on the rise, or Islam is the fastest running religion in the whole world, but it doesn't mean that's the right thing. I think one day, one time, Christianity will take course, will, will, uh, will be also leading. Let me, let me keep it from there. Thank you. Thank you, Lubega. Uh, Jeffina, can you just close that door so because the sound from the first year class is coming here. Thank you. Yeah, anyone else? Yeah, so we see that, um, you know, um, uh, we are called to usher in the kingdom of God. And when everyone does their part, uh, the kingdom will spread. God's rule, reign, dominion will spread on the earth. People will know uh, the true and living God. And that is what we are called to do, each one of us, wherever God has planted us. So when each one of us knows uh, our calling, uh, our purpose and what God has called us to do and we fulfill it, we are uh, extending uh, God's kingdom here on earth. And the reason why, uh, you know, we, we see the signs of the end time uh, these last few months we've been seeing and everyone has been talking about uh, Jesus is coming soon, uh, you know, uh, it's going to be any moment, but, you know, he will come when every person here on earth hears the good news of his uh, kingdom, hears the gospel of uh, 
Jesus Christ. And so it is, um, that is what is our mandate uh, as uh, as people of God, to know, uh, a people of the kingdom of God, to know who we are, to know our calling, to know our mandate, and to go and do it. And also as, um, uh, uh, you know, as a people of God, we are asked to preach and teach this and, uh, uh, you know, uh, to our congregation members, if you're a pastor, uh, you know, uh, to preach and teach uh, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, let them know what is their calling their mandate the calling mandate is not just to come on church every sunday you know just listen to the sermon to fellowship to take holy communion and to go back but you know what is their mandate their calling and that's why we see that the kingdom of god is not a theme that is spoken about or is preached in the churches and people don't know the urgency of um, building god's kingdom of extending um, um, god's kingdom on here on earth so we are studying this to know uh, what we are called, uh, you know, what is what is God's purpose, uh, what is His intent, uh, what is our calling, what is our position, what is our mandate, what we need to do, and if we take this seriously as individuals, and we go and. Um, teach it to uh, you know people in our churches and um, quicken their hearts quicken their minds and spirits uh, to um, extending God's kingdom uh, you know we will see the gospel being um, you know reached out in a in a faster pace and it had it uh, you know we hear news that you know yes in many European countries it's sad that many churches have become mosques have become temples have become shopping malls and all of those things is a sad thing but but um, it's a calling of the people there to um, to know what is their calling and to fulfill their plan and purpose. Um, yet we we see that there have been great revivals that uh, that have uh, come about in America and Europe, um, and uh, you know the church has kind of become lukewarm, has died down to the things of God, and so we see other religions uh, taking a precedence. But yet uh, we still see that the work of God is on the move. Um, there is revival happening. God is moving, and so for uh, us as people uh, who are uh, who God has placed in a specific geographical area when we look at the West or when we look at Asia or, or we look at even India, you know, we are called to not just to preach and teach, but also to pray. You know, it's important that we pray that God's kingdom, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, takes precedence in the hearts and minds. People uh, know that the kingdom of God is in them, what is their kingdom calling, mandate, um, live out of the kingdom perspective, act out of the kingdom perspective, uh, build God's kingdom, uh, because everybody is building their own kingdom, their own earthly kingdom, you know, they're looking at their own jobs, their children, um, Carriers, uh, building better homes, having more luxurious things. Uh, that has become the mindset of uh, people. That is where the world is running. And that is where the people of God or the church is also running. So, so important for the shepherd to she teach their sheep about the importance of building the uh, kingdom of God and also um, praying and interceding for nations and uh, for people groups, for tribes and for unreached um, uh, people groups in different pockets in different parts of the um, world. So that is what we are called uh, to do. Firstly is uh, to preach and teach. Secondly is to make known um, uh, God's uh, to God's people their calling, their mandate. And thirdly is to pray. And uh, fourthly as um, as um, uh, you know, churches to send out uh, missionaries uh, to mission fields, adopt different uh, mission fields and pray for them and uh, send out missionaries. And uh, But we see that churches are so, you know, uh, caught up in, in their own, uh, you know, uh, their own personal agendas or plans uh, that they have throughout the year, which is just... Uh, you know, making their uh, sheep comfortable and happy and well-fed and all of them are well-fed and fattened calves. <laughs> so to say that they don't want to, uh, you know, they, they, they don't want to go out and reach out. It's because the sheep shepherds have failed to uh, bring about this kingdom mindset and this kingdom perspective um, and, uh, you know, uh, fulfilling the great commission that God has called us to. 
Does that help uh, answer your question, Siddhi Kenu? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, oh. ma'am. Okay. Okay, so now you are as, as a student, you know, you can, you still have your father's church, uh, you can still, uh, you know, preach the kingdom uh, of God, you can preach this book to your church, uh, you know, let them know uh, how they can build God's kingdom, what role they have. And also as uh, a church, you can lead your people in, um, in, in praying for, uh, uh, you know, um, different um, uh, groups, um, uh, unreached people groups you can uh, you there are books available for of unreached people groups and uh, prayer requests and you can pray for them okay that's what we can do okay so we were looking at um, uh, the kingdom of god and uh, we we said that the kingdom of god is the is the uh, was part of god's original intent and purpose uh, uh, even before the creation of the world, even before the foundations of the world. And uh, God wanted to have a kingdom of heirs, uh, of people who would be kings along with him, who will inherit his kingdom, who will be heirs, co-heirs with Christ in that kingdom. And um, uh, people who will be heirs and joint heirs with Christ. And we see that uh, uh, at the appropriate time, God introduced uh, his original plan, his intent, what was was in his heart uh, he brought about it when he created the world uh, when he created the world it was basically him um, bringing about his original intent his uh, of his heart the purpose of his heart which is to uh, initiate his kingdom here on earth so God introduced his kingdom and we read that in Genesis chapter 1 um, uh, we read verses 27 and uh, 28 so we see that um, you know, when he created a uh, man and woman, uh, he gave both man and woman uh, the authority to sub due and to have dominion over the earth so he basically created people uh, who would be heirs uh, who would rule who would manage who will execute uh, God's kingdom uh, of his kingdom here on earth and uh, and we see that through creation uh, he begins to unfold his plan and his um, purpose okay so, uh, but we know that um, uh, this his uh, god's original intent his purpose his plan uh, was um, temporarily interrupted uh, when was it temporarily interrupted when was god's original intent plan of um, bringing about his kingdom here on earth with the initiated through creation how was it temporarily in, uh, you know inter uh, interrupted Thank you, John Paul. When uh, man sinned, yes, the fall of um, uh, man. So we see that um, uh, when man uh, fell, uh, it kind of temporarily interrupted uh, the purpose, the intent of God of bringing in his uh, kingdom here. Okay, uh, but the good news is that we read that Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, uh, who was slain even before the foundations of the world, which means that uh, uh, God knew that this is going to happen and he already had uh, the plan of redemption in his heart even before the foundations of the world. Uh, it was already in his heart, in his mind. It was a done thing. It was a completed thing because the word of God says even before the foundation of the world, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, was slain even before the foundations of the world. So it was... Uh, the plan of redemption is not something that, uh, you know, God said, oh, you know, what do I do now? Uh, I had this whole uh, wonderful plan of, uh, uh, you know, bringing about my kingdom here on earth. And it was so beautifully going and mankind fell. It was not something that he was taken up by surprise, but it's something that he knew even before the foundations of the world. And even before the foundations of the world, he had the plan of redemption it was already a done, completed thing in the heart and the mind of God because the, Jesus, the Lamb of God, was already slain before the foundations of the world. And that is why he is God. Uh, so he's sovereign. He's, uh, uh, he's omnipotent and he, he knows everything. And uh, so we see that um, uh, in time, uh, he brings about his plan of um, redemption. Okay. Um, 
so when uh, mankind fell, when Adam and Eve fell, there are two things that uh, happened in the context that we are studying about the kingdom of God. The first thing is that uh, the lordship, you know, uh, we know that uh, God initiated his kingdom here on earth and he gave um, uh, man and woman uh, the authority, the lordship, the domain uh, of the earth here. He gave his uh, kingdom to us. He gave his authority, his lordship uh, to us. But when Adam and Eve fell, uh, when they sinned, uh, they gave their lordship over to uh, the devil. So it was temporary in the hands of the devil. So he was a uh, ruler uh, and he had taken lordship and authority over the earth. The second thing is um, that you know um uh in god's original intent and plan was that uh man and woman would or mankind would uh, uh human beings would inherit the earth there would be hairs with god co hairs with christ and this also was marred um uh, we were no longer hairs of the kingdom uh, but we became as slaves uh, we came under the dominion, we came under the authority, uh, under the oppression of the uh, evil one. Okay, so these are the two things that in the context of the kingdom of God that happened uh, during the uh, fall. So God's plan of redemption was not just to save us um, uh, from our sins, or it was not just to rescue us from Satan and from his grip, uh, but the plan of, uh, of course, these two are part of that plan of his redemption. But in the context of what we are studying about the kingdom of God, uh, God's plan of redemption is to bring us back, his people, his heirs, co-heirs, uh, his sons and daughters back into that place of experiencing God's original intent uh, of a kingdom that he had prepared for a people who would be hairs with him and joint hairs or co-hairs with um, uh, with Christ. Okay, so that is what he accomplishes uh, during the plan of redemption. Uh, he brings us back to a place where we um, are given back our position that we are sons and daughters, we are heirs, co-heirs with Christ in his kingdom, and uh, and uh, we receive back our authority. We receive back the power. We are no longer slaves. Um, uh, uh, Satan has no longer authority over, uh, you know, the, God's uh, domain, his kingdom here on earth, uh, but we are uh, given back our authority. We are given back our position and we are given back our um, identity okay so we uh, we need to look at ourselves even though we've come from darkness into light um, we know that when we are born again only our spirit man is born again but you know we need to renew our minds uh, daily Okay, and uh, one of the aspects of renewing our mind is, is in this area, uh, you know, who we are, uh, that we are sons and daughters, we are heirs, co heirs with Christ. We have to develop this mindset, uh, not of slavery and of subjection, uh, but that we are children of God and that we are heirs with Christ and that we rule and reign um, with Him. Okay, so in the process of, uh, uh, in the plan of redemption, uh, God wanted to restore two things. The first thing is uh, wanted to give back the authority that was taken, um, that, sorry, that the authority that uh, human beings gave to Satan when they fell, uh, God brought back that authority um, and uh, that authority is now given to the church. Uh, so the church is um, is in one sense uh, the the kingdom of God because it's God's domain, His rule, His reign, His government, uh, His presence, which uh, is manifested uh, every time His people meet. And also the church are um, a, a group of people who are called saints, um, who are sons and daughters, heirs and co heirs with. Um, Christ. So, and he also wanted to uh, change our understanding from being subjects or slaves to recognizing uh, that we are heirs and co heirs with Christ. So, that is the place that God wants us to 
be so you know born again experience is not just something that oh you know uh, i'm born again uh, uh, i receive god's blessing and i have a ticket to heaven okay uh, <laughs> i have a place booked for me in heaven it's it's not just that it's 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 something as small and belittling uh, the 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 plan of redemption or the price jesus paid on the cross it's uh, it's it's a kind of uh, it's humiliating god for what he has done when we just think in this very meager small way but you know we need to think about it in a broader perspective and see it in a broader way of what God has really redeemed us from, uh, you know, and where he has brought us to, what is our position, what is our authority, and what is our calling. And uh, once we realize our position, then we operate out of that um, uh, position, okay? Uh, for example, um, you know, um, uh, just for example now, you know, in this building, this building belongs to, just say this building belongs to my dad. Okay, he's uh, just say he's running a business here, and he's the he's the boss here. He owns this whole establishment, this building, this uh, this business. So when I enter the gate, uh, you know, uh, and I come in, I don't need to get permission uh, to go and meet my dad. I can just walk in, and I can just walk in right into his office, and I can just speak to my dad because that is, uh, uh, you know, that I because the position that i have that i am his daughter you know i don't have to uh you know uh, uh, the guard will not stop me at the gate and ask me who i want to speak if i have an appointment the secretary will not stop me and say okay, you don't have an appointment you can't meet him he's busy but i have access to my dad anytime i can come to this building no one can stop me i can just go and uh, meet him that is my position that is the authority that i carry so even in um uh, you know, when we are uh, ushered into the kingdom of God, we carry that same position, that same authority, but yet we don't uh, use that uh, in arrogance and pride, but um, you know, in humility, um, uh, we know who are uh, who we are, what is our position, and we um, uh, follow through in that. So uh, after fall, we see that the kingdom is reintroduced. So when is the kingdom uh, reintroduced? Is um, you know the beginning of. Um, in the Gospels, we see that John the Baptist, uh, who came announcing the arrival of the kingdom of God. So John the Baptist comes and prepares the way for Jesus Christ, uh, who is the Son of God, who is the King of the kingdom. Uh, and we see that John the Baptist is the forerunner. And what is his message? Um, the message is in Matthew chapter 3, verse 2. Would somebody like to read that, please? Matthew chapter 3, verse 2. Matthew chapter 3 was to repent therefore uh, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Thank you, John. So uh, John went about preaching, says, uh, saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What is the meaning of uh, uh, um, the, the phrase is at hand? Yes, Shafina? Near. Yeah. It's near, yes. It's close by. It's near you. It's reachable. Um, so, you know, repent for the kingdom of God is here. And then we see that John the Baptist, a forerunner um, uh, of Jesus. And then we see Jesus coming to the scene. He began his ministry and Jesus begins his ministry by proclaiming the arrival of the uh, kingdom of God. We read this in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. And also we see that Jesus announces the good news of the kingdom in Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. So can one of you please read Matthew chapter 4, verse 17, and someone else can read Matthew chapter 4, verse 23? Verse 17, from that time Matthew Jesus began to preach and had to say, and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Thank you. Um, can somebody else read Matthew chapter 4, verse 23? And Jesus went about all Galilee, king in the synagogue, preaching the gospels of the kingdom, and healing on all kinds of sicknesses, sickness, and all kinds 
of disease among the people. Thank you. So we see that, uh, you know, Jesus spent his time teaching and preaching about the kingdom of God. And in verse uh, Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, we see that he proclaims uh, the good news of the uh, kingdom. Now, uh, we'll just look at a few important things about the uniqueness of the kingdom of God. What is the uniqueness of the kingdom of God? It's there on page 8 for you. Uh, the uniqueness of the kingdom of God is that the king, the king of the kingdom uh, stepped into our world. Okay, so the king of heaven, um, God, you know, he stepped into our world. And, um, you know, why did he step into our world? Uh, as I said, to recover uh, everything that was uh, stolen, was taken away, which was lost at the fall. Um, you know, he uh, recovered it back. So he personally came to usher in the kingdom of God here on uh, earth and he um, executed the kingdom of God here on earth and he revealed to us you know what the kingdom is like okay and he showed us how uh, he modeled for us how we can uh, live uh, this kingdom how we can be part of this kingdom how we can live this kingdom and how we can usher in this kingdom uh, here on earth and he left an open invitation for everyone who was interested uh, to come and be part of the uh, kingdom of God but uh, we when we see earthly kings you know when they want to conquer a territory or an uh, 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 or a kingdom um, or a geographical area, they usually send uh, their army, which is led by a captain, uh, to conquer okay, that place and uh, to bring back the exploits and to win the battle. But we see here that, you know, uh, the king of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, he did not uh, send anyone else, but he himself came. He himself came and he himself uh, fought for his uh, people uh, to reinstate them to their original intent, their purpose, their calling, and their uh, position. And uh, we see that, uh, you know, John the Baptist was a forerunner who came uh, announcing about this king. And uh, we see that the king of the kingdom coming personally um, and establishing the kingdom here, making known the kingdom here. So when, when Jesus taught, when he preached, when he did the miracles, when he showed forgiveness and compassion and care, it was basically uh, him ushering the kingdom and saying, this is how the kingdom of God is. This is how the kingdom, uh, this is what you will enjoy in the kingdom of God. This is um, uh, are the benefits of being part of the kingdom. And he invited people to be part of the kingdom of God. Okay. Um, like we said in the beginning, uh, okay, so these are the uniqueness of the kingdom of God. And like we said in the, like I said in the beginning that, you know, the kingdom of God is a spiritual um, uh, kingdom because it's in our heart. Uh, it's in our lives. It's within us. Okay. So the two aspects of the kingdom of God, the first thing is a spiritual uh, aspect or spiritual dimension of the kingdom and then there is a natural aspect or the natural dimension of the kingdom of um, God. So um, the spiritual dimension is what we see operating here and now in the present. The natural dimension is what we will see in a way into the future uh, when the king will come again the second time. Um, so the spiritual um, uh, dimension of the kingdom is what we are experiencing now, is what is what people have experienced all these years, uh, what people will experience even in the, in the years to come, uh, which has to do with the king's rule, domain, his reign, his government, uh, uh, you know, in uh, the hearts and lives of People. So it's a spiritual dimension because the rule, the reign of God is in the hearts and in the lives of uh, people. But there will be, uh, the, we will see the natural dimension of this kingdom uh, when, you know, the king returns. When Jesus returns, uh, there will be the uh, battle of the Armageddon where he will throw out, uh, you know, or he'll overthrow all the armies of the nations of the world and he will establish the physical kingdom uh, in um, Jerusalem. And uh, the exciting thing about this, uh, you know, we read in Daniel chapter 4 is that the kingdom of God uh, will be given to the saints. So who are the saints? 
who are the saints? Yeah, so it's you. Say, you know, you can tell yourself, I'm a saint. Uh, sometimes we don't, uh, uh, <laughs> we think more that we are more a sinner than a saint, but uh, you know, each one of us are, are saints. And it's important to tell yourself who you are. You say, I'm a saint. I'm a child of God. Yes, Lubega? I was under, I was trying to answer the question, who are the saints? And my answer was, those who will believe until the end. Those who will be? Those who will believe until the end. Those who will be believing until the end, until the end of times, or until they die, until those who will be believing. Okay. Thank you, Rubiga. Okay, so, um, and, uh, you know, the government, God's government here on earth, his physical kingdom that we, he'll be establishing here on the earth in Jerusalem, you know, who will be part of the government, who will rule and reign? It's the saints, it's you and I, okay? So, uh, you know, um, maybe some of us think that, you know, I work so hard for God, I live a holy life, righteous life, uh, you know, but... Uh, I'm facing all of these hardships, these difficulties, um, you know, um, but, you know, take heart because um, there is a reward, uh, not just in uh, in heaven, but we will see that we will experience the rewards, the benefits here on earth itself. Uh, when Jesus will establish his physical kingdom, you know, um, um, the greater... Um, uh, the greater the good steward that you have been, um, faithful, uh, lived a righteous life, um, uh, walked in the ways of God, uh, loved him with all your heart, soul, mind and strength, you will give, be given positions of authority in God's government. So we, his saints, will rule and reign in his, uh, uh, his natural kingdom, which is just the natural dimension of the uh, kingdom of God. So the so this di dimension or the natural dimension of the kingdom of God will happen sometime way in the future, uh, but we are at present experiencing the spiritual dimension about the kingdom of um, God. Okay. So how does this? Uh, how does the spiritual dimension of that uh, 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 of the kingdom of God affect our our lives? Affects your life? How does it affect my life? What does it mean? Um, to us okay so that's what we will be looking at in the uh, uh, in this course as we study this course um, but we will look at how we can enter the kingdom of god so how do how do people enter the kingdom of god how do people enter the kingdom of god or how are they part of the kingdom of God? When are they called sons and daughters of the kingdom of God? When they become, when do they become heirs of the kingdom of God? When do they inherit the kingdom of God? By believing in Jesus. Okay, thank you, Supashish. Uh, let's read John chapter 3, verses 3 and 5. Can somebody read that, please? John chapter 3, verses 3 and 5. John chapter 3, verses 3 and 5. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Thank you, Roslyn. Uh, so here we see uh, how can we be part of uh, the kingdom of God? How do we enter the kingdom of God? Uh, is when we are born uh, uh, again. So we are born again, as this verse says, we are born again uh, from above, uh, which means uh, we receive a spiritual transformation. Uh, and this transformation, spiritual transformation, is only brought about by God and the work of the Holy Spirit in our hearts and in our lives. So it's the work of the Holy Spirit uh, and the work of the Word, the Word of God. Uh, and so when we are born again, we are ushered into the kingdom of God. We become sons and daughters. We
we become heirs uh, of God and co-heirs with Christ and we begin to experience the uh, kingdom of God. And it says here that I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of uh, God. So what does it mean? Cannot see. That means unless we are born again, we cannot be part of the kingdom of God and we cannot partake uh, or experience uh, the kingdom of God. Okay. There's another reference uh, given here on page number 10, Colossians chapter 1 verses 12 and 13. Can somebody read that please? Colossians chapter 1 verse 12 and 13. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be giving thanks to the Father. Go ahead, Subhashis. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the sense in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and converted us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. Thank you. So here it says that we, when we are born again, you know, we are transferred. We have a transfer of a citizenship from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Okay. So we see that two opposite kingdoms here, kingdom of darkness, kingdom of light, uh, kingdom of um, God, kingdom of uh, Satan. Um, uh, so we are, uh, you know, we um, are transferred from the kingdom of darkness and we're usher ushered into the kingdom of uh, uh, Jesus Christ. Okay, so when we are born again, we become part of a new kingdom that is a kingdom of heaven. And, uh, you know, just as uh, when you become a citizen of a new kingdom you need to adjust you know to their laws their rules uh, uh, to their government uh, authorities uh, to the law of their land uh, you know adjust to various uh, cultures uh, food and everything the same way when we have brought been brought out of darkness into light from out of the uh, power of satan of being slaves of satan to being um, children of god to being uh, part of the kingdom of jesus christ we need to also make several adjustments and adaptations okay so uh, it's not that something that comes automatically to us it's something that we need to be mindful of uh, and how do we know or uh, you know what is the kingdom rule the mandate uh, uh, the laws um, the authority that we have the position that we have we need to read God's word the more we read God's word the more we are grounded in our foundations of who we are in Christ you know uh, what is our calling what is a position what is our authority and once we know that you know uh, we will operate out of that we will live out of that perspective and uh, we will truly live as kingdom, uh, as, uh, uh, as the children of the kingdom of light, uh, as uh, king, uh, children of, um, of uh, being citizens of the kingdom of um, heaven. Uh, before we end this chapter, we will look at um, uh, 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 an aspect of the kingdom of God, of being sons of the kingdom of God. We look at uh, the parable of the, uh, we'll just study one parable here, of course, in this, uh, uh, in the in the course of uh, um, uh, of studying this course, you know, we will we will look at many other parables about the kingdom of God. But here we look at one parable, the parable of the wheat and tares. Uh, so we see that um, you know uh, a farmer went out to sow uh, wheat, and uh, when um, you know the enemy also came and sowed uh, sowed uh, tares or wheat. And uh, what does the uh, you know the the farmer do he doesn't pull out the weeds because he knows when he uproots the uh, the weeds it will also uproot the plant uh, the weeds that is uh, growing and um, uh, so Jesus just says this to the uh, the crowd but when they are uh, you know away from the crowd and uh, Jesus is just with his disciples the disciples ask him what is the meaning of the parable so Jesus explains that to them in Matthew chapter 13 verses 36 to 40 so can somebody read that please Matthew 13 36 to 40 
Matthew chapter 13 verses 36 to 14, 40. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sowed the good seeds is the son of man. The fields is the world, and the good seed stands for the son of the kingdom. The weeds are the son of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angel. As the weeds are pulled up and burnt in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. Thank you, Siti Kenu. So here in this little picture, now, you know, Jesus is explaining to us an entire scenario of what is happening in the world now and what will happen in the end. Uh, just like to bring our attention to a few things here. It says the son of man is sowing good seeds. So who are the good seeds here? Yeah. Jafina say me, yeah, that's right. It's you and I. So we are the good seeds. The good seeds are the sons and daughters of the kingdom. So it's so important for us to picture ourselves as good seeds. Okay, um, you know, not seeing ourselves as fallen, sinful, shame, living in shame and guilt, uh, but looking as at uh, as ourselves as good seeds, um, uh, uh, as sons and daughters of the kingdom of God. So we need to picture ourselves as good seeds uh, of the kingdom of God, and each one of us are good seeds, and we are being sown into this world by uh, Jesus, and He has put us here on this earth for the reason and for a um, purpose and so here we see that there are only two kind of people on the earth um, one kind is those who are sons and daughters of the kingdom of God and the other is those who are sons and daughters of the wicked one okay there are no hybrids uh, you cannot be both uh, you know you you can only be one you cannot be a hybrid you can either be the son and daughter of the kingdom of god or you can be the son and daughter of um, uh, the wicked one okay uh, or you can either be a wheat or you can be a tear okay so as believers each one of us are good seeds each one of us are sons and daughters of the kingdom of god and we are sown into this world that which, which means that you know uh, your purpose in this world is connected to the fact that you are the son and daughter of the kingdom of god that is your purpose so sometimes you're wondering what is my purpose in life the first purpose in life you need to know is that you are uh, a good seed your son and daughter of uh, uh, god you're sown into this world and that is your purpose um and uh, you are here to build the kingdom of god okay so that is the only reason we are here so our purpose our mission on earth or your purpose my purpose my mission your mission here on earth is described by the fact that we are sons and daughters of the kingdom of god it's not defined by your education it's not defined by your job it's not defined by your career it's not defined by what you are doing on the earth but your purpose your mission is this that you are a son and daughter of the kingdom of god and that defines everything else uh, you do here on earth so your job your career your education your marriage your you know you're having a family uh, a means through which uh, you express the fact or express the truth that you are a son and daughter of the kingdom of God. So all of these job, career, your education, all of them are avenues, are venues that bear the fact that uh, you are a good seed sown by God here on earth and you are put on display you are put on display to establish the fact that you belong to a greater kingdom to a higher kingdom to a greater a bigger mindset a greater bigger mind uh, 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 perspective a uh, uh, greater and a bigger kingdom that is a kingdom of God and that is being expressed in and through you even as uh, you know go you go about doing your job fulfilling your career or your calling whatever God has for you so you know we need to uh, having said all this we need to operate from a kingdom of God uh, 
perspective. So how will you live? How will you operate your life if you saw everything uh, from a perspective uh, that you are a son and daughter of the kingdom of God? Uh, what would you do? You know, where would you go? Uh, you know, uh, you, uh, how would you invest your time? What will you strive for? Uh, where will you uh, invest your time, your energy, your efforts? Uh, you know, if you saw yourself as a son and daughter of the kingdom of God. So when you see yourself as who you are and what God has called you to be and what um, he had in mind even before the foundations of the world, you would, you know... Um, um, uh, work out of that perspective you will operate out of that perspective and um, you will fulfill God's plan uh, for your life so God's plan is that he wanted to prepare a kingdom and he wanted to prepare a people for his kingdom who would be his sons and daughters who would be uh, his heirs and co-heirs uh, uh, heirs of Christ, uh, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ in his uh, kingdom so that is what God is unfolding has been unfolding in the past throughout history he's been unfolding it even right now so even as we are born again into this kingdom uh, we need to operate out of this kingdom mindset and out of this kingdom um, perspective okay so even as you've heard all of this today uh, you know we need to make a conscious effort to live uh, out of that kingdom perspective uh, so you need to ask ourselves you know how would we live our life uh, where we, we invest our time and energy our efforts into um, and um, you know, ask ourselves this question: How would uh, life change um, uh, if you and I uh, have um, uh, come to know this truth that we are sons and daughters of the uh, kingdom of God? So, in the course of this, um, you know, year we'll be talk. Uh, I mean, the rest of these months we'll be talking about the principles of the parables of the kingdom. Uh, we'll understand how the kingdom of God operates. Uh, we'll talk about the authority of the kingdom. We'll talk about the relationship of the church with uh, the king. But even as we try to understand all of these things, uh, you know, we need to just basically come down to this basic fact to understand this fact that even as we are born again, now we're born again into the kingdom of God. We are uh, children of God, sons and daughters. We are heirs of God, co-heirs with Christ. He has reinstated us to our original position, our identity, and we need to, uh, you know, work out of that um, identity. So, being a son and daughter of kingdom is our identity, and that is what defines our purpose here in this world. Okay, so that was. Uh, Chapter one. Anyone has any questions? Yes, ma. Can I ask a question? Sure, Isaac. Yes, I just want to, just to throw light on this uh, phrase or the statement that the Lamb of God, who was slain before the foundation of the earth taking the word frame in context that slave means to kill. Mm -hmm. So what does that uh, phrase or uh, verse mean? That the Lamb of God was slain before the foundation of the earth. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, good question. Thank you, Isaac. So the Lamb of God is slain is uh, very familiar in the Jewish context because uh, the Lamb was slain during the Jewish Passover, uh, also the Day of Atonement, um, you know, um, uh, to atone for the sins of the whole of uh, the uh, uh, of the Israelite race. So uh, the Lamb was slain uh, uh, to atone for or to cover the sins of, uh, uh, you know, uh, of God's people so that God could relate to them, uh, God could uh, come in their midst and speak to them and uh, dwell among them, okay? Um, but we know that um, Jesus Christ was the Lamb of God who was slain, which means that uh, uh, the Son of God came and he died on the cross. That means uh, uh, he gave his life, 
uh, in exchange for our lives that we can be forgiven of our sins we can be we can overcome uh, we can be set free from the power of the evil one uh, from his bondage from his slavery uh, but uh, in the context that we are looking about the kingdom of god uh, we are saying that uh, the kingdom of god was uh, uh, you know uh, was god's uh, uh, was god's original intent and plan in his heart and in his uh, in his mind even before uh, he created the world even before the foundations of the world were laid and he when did he bring it about he brought it about in time and history and that is when uh, he when he created the world he he brought about his kingdom and he brought about his kingdom by building by uh, creating uh, human beings man and woman and he gave them dominion he gave them uh, authority over the kingdom that he introduced he established here on earth but we see that when adam and eve sin when they fell um, you know god begins the plan of redemption but the plan of redemption was not something that uh, god just uh, thought about it when adam and eve fell but it was something that was already in the, in the heart and mind of god he knew that this is going to happen and um, we see that you know he already knew that his son would come and die on the cross and would fulfill the plan of redemption and would set his people free uh, bring them back to their original position intent and re-establish or re-initiate the kingdom of god here on um, earth and so um uh, with that in mind we see that you know uh, uh, that you know jesus uh, dying on the cross was something that uh, took place at the point of history but it was already a conceived thing it was already a done thing a completed thing in the heart and mind of uh, god even before it happened in history so what we're saying is that god did not plan things in the course of history but even before history began even before time began it was something that he had already thought about he would already completed in his mind even before it ever took place here on earth did that help answer your question isaac yes perfect thank you ma okay thank you everyone for joining class i'll see you next week i will have to rush off to our next class so have a good uh, day and uh, uh, God bless each one of you. Thank you.